Hi, uh, Lauer. So it was a very useful visit in Norway, I think, uh, because it reminded me of uh, constructive technology assessment I was involved in. The main aim here was to anticipate impacts of technological change early on. This is now implemented to, through this program on responsible research and, uh, uh, and innovation, which from my perspective is very radical. And I'm not sure that I realize how radical it is, uh, because what you do, you start to really think through impacts early on and you change the direction and the nature of the research and innovation process. What was your sense of it? Well, you might know that I'm a bit of new to this, but in general I agree with your assessment on this. Um, what they were trying to do here is, uh, they were, by the way, they were borrowing from the UK. Yeah. It would interest you to know that. Uh, they were trying to bring in together four dimensions, uh, how to how to guide research and innovation that had been treated separate before. Mm -hmm. So the basic idea is that uh, you would need to turn attention to the co-production of science, technology and society and develop better foresight methods and uh, be a bit more prospective about the whole process, how science, technology, how science and technology produces the society. Then you need to be reflexive about your own assumptions. Um, then you need to include more stakeholders and really, I mean really include them substantively, not only formally. And the final idea is that you really need to responsive, and you really need to be responsive to these changes in the sense that all the inclusivity, reflexivity and anticipation must really feed in to your own governance practices. And in that way, I would feel that, you know, the Norwegians are starting to make a headway on this. Yeah, and I think they had this interesting uh, experience where they changed course because they found out, because they tried to organize this competition. Yeah, it was uh, for establishing a digital life center. Yeah, that was it, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they did it in a traditional way. So asking centers to compete, but then realized that they needed more coordination and they changed, so they became an active change agent, in fact, not a traditional funder, but they started to influence the process of how this would be developed, the program. That was a very interesting example. Uh, and how would it fit with the criteria? Well, I would say it's a prime example of the institutional reflexivity, because what they realized early on in, mm. in the call was that, uh, you know, it wasn't working, but uh, then they tried to change the rules in the middle of the game. So what they did is they gathered together the bidders, the bidding universities, there were three universities, and then they had a dialogue session. So, okay, mm. this call isn't working, what are we going to do about it? And in the end, what they figured out was uh, that uh, they would split the call in two parts. So they would have a joint bid on the networking part and, and a competitive competitive bid on the research mm. projects. So mm. they introduced a mix of com competition and cooperation and brought also brought in the international experts to evaluate this process and to guide this process. So I would say yes, this is a, a very neat little example of how you can treat the call as an instrument, use reflexivity to monitor whether it's not working and alter your course